Good morning. Uh, thank you for allowing me to talk to you today. Uh, so I'm going to be talking to you mostly about surgery, uh, but Dr. Kirkwood asked me to kind of combine that with staging. Uh, so when you talk about surgery, surgery helps us gain understand the staging of the tumor. And when we have the staging of the tumor, it kind of tells us what type of surgery we should do. So they go hand in hand. So as I'm talking about one, uh, I'll try and bring in the other. A little disclaimer, I have a few slides very similar to Dr. Ferris, I apologize. And just like Dr. Ferris, I have a few, uh, a little bit more graphic slides, uh, but you should be able to handle those. So what are the goals of surgery? Obviously, the goals of surgery, surgery are to histologically confirm that this is indeed a melanoma. Uh, just like Dr. Ferris said, there are squamous cell carcinomas, there are basal cell carcinomas, and benign tumors of the skin that can look like a melanoma uh, from the eye. Uh, and what we need to do is look at these underneath the microscope to tell yes or no, is this a melanoma? We want a complete and accurate microstaging of the tumor. And as I go into the staging, you'll understand what I mean by that. Uh, we want appropriate margins of uh, resection so that it decreases or almost minimizes the likelihood of recurrence at the area of surgery. Uh, we want an optimal functional outcome. Sometimes these uh, melanomas can get quite large, and if we have to get margins around those, we want to make sure that the functional outcome, whether it be a limb or uh, even you know, the chest and abdomen, that people have a functional and cosmetic outcome afterwards. And then depending on the staging, we'll go into lymph node evaluation. So just like Dr. Ferris said, uh, depending on, you know, these, this is what tends to either bring you to a medical professional for evaluation or a medical uh, professional looks at this and decides this is what I'm going to biopsy. So asymmetry, border irregularity, color uh, changes, or diameter. Dr. Ferris went over there very nicely. So what happens? So we need tissue. So oftentimes, either in your primary care physician's office or your dermatologist's office, they will biopsy this lesion. Most people will just do an excisional biopsy. If it's a small lesion, they'll take a scalpel, they'll numb up the skin first, take a scalpel, and remove it with narrow margins. They're not trying to do a complete surgical excision. What they want is a biopsy. So they just skate around the tumor or the, the mole itself and send it to pathology. The important thing is that we need, it, they, we need them to cut to below the tumor because depth of the tumor is very important to us for staging. And then where they excise it and how they excise it uh, helps us as surgical oncologists be able to do a wider excision and still give you that functional outcome. If the tumor is larger, sometimes they'll resort to a punch biopsy. A punch biopsy is a circular scalpel where they can just cut a little piece of the tissue off. And you can see here, it's, uh, it cuts through the different layers of the skin and gives us a depth of the tumor. Uh, if the tumor's big, it doesn't necessarily take out the entire tumor because they might not have the facilities in their office to take the entire tumor out. Uh, what we like to see is it, uh, a biopsy at the edge of the tumor with the, margin, with the normal skin uh, so that the uh, pathologist can describe that junction. So this is a very typical pathology report that we'll get back from our pathologist once they look at that excisional or punch biopsy. So there's a few things that, uh, that jump out at us when we look at this report. There's a lot of big words there, but basically these are the things that we look at and talk to each other about. So is it a melanoma, yes or no? So yes, this patient had a melanoma. What is the depth of that melanoma? This is 2.85 millimeters, so it's an intermediate depth. And I'll go through the different depths. Is it ulcerated or not ulcerated? This is looking at whether or not the tumor ha is growing so fast that it actually breaks the skin on top of it. And if it breaks the skin on top of it and starts to bleed, then it tells us, it gives us an indication that this is a faster growing tumor, maybe a more aggressive tumor. So ulceration tells us this is something that maybe we need to look at even further. Or mitoses. Mitoses are just the number of cells that are actively dividing. So if there's more actively dividing cells, then it's more likely going to be a faster growing tumor or a more aggressive tumor. So this is staging. So we're looking at tumor staging. Staging is based on three things. Tumor, the size of the tumor or depth of the tumor. Node status, whether or not the tumor had the ability to get to the nodes 
and metastases, whether or not the tumor had the ability to spread to other organs. So those are the three things. So starting with tumor staging, or the T of the TNM classification, stage 1A melanomas are within one millimeter depth within the skin. Um, and these are uh, the uh, early stage melanomas. These are mostly cured by surgical uh, removal. The likelihood of spread of these to any other organs is incredibly low. And as Dr. Ferris showed, these patients have very, very high rates of uh, disease-free survival and overall survival at 10 years. When you go a little bit deeper, you get to stage 1B melanomas, which go up to about 2 millimeters in, in depth, or show one of those worrisome features that we talked about, and that's the ulceration. You just get a breakdown in the middle of the tumor. Stage 2 disease, so stage 2A is a little bit of a deeper tumor with an ulcer, or a tumor that goes up to four millimeters without ulcer. Stage 2b, an ulcer up to four millimeters or greater than four millimeters without an ulcer. And 2c is greater than four millimeters with an ulcer. So I, I, I'm touching right now on just stage one and stage two disease because that disease is the disease that did not get out to the lymph nodes and did not get, become metastatic. So this is just localized disease to the skin. So what's surgical management of disease localized to the skin? So it's a wide local excision. It's definitive surg surgical treatment of that cutaneous melanoma. The excision needs to be deep all the way down through the skin, through the fat, down to the muscle layer. We don't take any of the muscle layer, but we go down to the muscle layer to make sure that we get all of that tissue. We take out the risk of it coming back locally in that area, and we give plenty of tissue to the pathologist for them to give us a total accurate depth of that tumor. Um, uh, the width of the margin is determined by the depth of that tumor. So we go based on, based on that excisional biopsy as to how wide we go. And I'll go into the different de uh, widths. Um, the, uh, so for surgery, um, traditionally in surgery, we've always thought bigger is always better wider is always better. So uh, back in, 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 the, in 20, 30 years ago, it was thought that you needed at least five centimeter margins on any melanoma. Five centimeter margins on either side is a very large defect. And if it's a thin melanoma that has a very low likelihood of coming back, but we're doing this very, very large surgery, we're, we're, we're cosmetically destroying these people or getting these people a very dysfunctional outcome. So. Um, what we needed to do to close those large defects is flaps. So this is, this is an example of some type of flap closure. So you're rotating skin from an, uh, another area to try and close that area where we removed a piece of tissue, uh, or an even larger flap, or skin graft in an area that, that, is, that is very large. As you can see, uh, I, I don't believe that these are very cosmetically pleasing. Sometimes with, when people come in with very large tumors, we still need to do this, but for most tumors that come in, we don't need to do this. So what they did was they went out and they looked at patients that had thin melanomas first. So thin melanomas, they looked at anything below two millimeters in depth. And they said, well, we usually do five centimeters. Why don't we take half of the patients and do two centimeters? And uh, see if there is a difference in overall local recurrence rate. And three large studies showed that there was no difference between two and five centimeter margins in local recurrence rate for tumors less than definitely one millimeter. There was a little bit of an increased incidence of tumor recurrence between one and two millimeters. And then somebody looked and said, well, why don't we do compare one and three centimeter margins? And for one millimeter in depth melanomas, there's no difference between one and three centimeter margins. So they looked at these and said, well, if two is, if two is equal to five and one is equal to three, then for one millimeter tumors, we can do one centimeter margins. Anywhere in the body, almost anywhere in the body, that is a very easy area to close. We just close with a straight line, no flaps, no skin grafts, cosmetically very pleasing. For one to two centimeter, I'm sorry, for one to two millimeter 
depth melanomas, there was a slight increase in the local recurrence rate. So in areas where it's easy to take a little bit of a wider margin, they suggest taking a little bit of a wider margin, up to two centimeters. But if in an area you can't get that much tissue, it's okay to start to creep back down towards one centimeter. For intermediate thickness melanomas, uh, looking at between two millimeters and four millimeters, uh, a two centimeter margin is equal to a four centimeter margin. Uh, a one centimeter margin had higher local recurrence rates. So for anything greater than two millimeter margins, you need a two centimeter margin. And if that means having to do a flap, then it's better to do the flap. For thick melanomas, which are greater than four millimeters in depth, it's not the local recurrence rate that's probably going to affect people's outcomes. So just because there's a slight increase in local recurrence doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to change overall survival. So in, in these patients, it's also suggested to do two centimeter margins. So that was talking about just tumor uh, depth. So those are patients that did not spread, so stage one and stage two disease. Stage three disease is that it had the ability to get to the lymph node. And stage four disease is it's gotten to other organs. And it, it's very important to know what stage you're in so that we can give you an adequate prognosis for your overall survival. And if your stage is higher and your likelihood of recurrence is higher, then you're, that, that's when you become a candidate for either adjuvant treatment, meaning treatment after we've taken out your tumor, or to be enrolled in a clinical protocol to see if, if some of the newer therapies can help you decrease your chance of recurrence. So how do we learn, what, how do we know if you're stage three disease? So we have to check the regional lymph nodes. Melanomas have a tendency to spread through the lymphatics to the regional lymph nodes. Resection usually controls the local area, uh, but we need to know whether or not it gets to the lymph nodes. Physical examination is good. Uh, when we do physical exams, uh, when we look at a melanoma, say it's on your arm, we should be looking at the lymph nodes in your armpit or axilla or your neck, so we should be feeling those lymph nodes. If we could feel lymph nodes, then they're more worrisome. But even lymph nodes that you can feel, 20% of the time, they don't have melanoma in them. They're enlarged for some other reason. Or 20% of the patients that have totally normal feeling lymph nodes actually have melanoma cells in them. So it's, physical examination is not accurate enough for an overall staging. Now we've learned that Traditionally, when we used to do uh, big melanoma surgery, we would, if it was a, a, a deeper melanoma, we would go and surgically remove the lymph nodes in the armpit. Well, that has complications. If you just go in and take out all of these lymph nodes, people get swelling in the arm, people have a larger surgery, a bigger cut, complications from the surgery, and many, many times there was no disease within those lymph nodes. So the surgery, we were doing a lot of surgery on people who didn't necessarily need it. So then they created sentinel lymph node biopsy. What they do is they inject a small amount of radioactive material or blue dye or both at the site of the tumor and to follow it to see which lymph node it goes to. And the idea is similar to bowling, that you have to hit that first pin to get all the rest of the pins down. So if that first pin or that first lymph node has melanoma cells in it, that tells you that it's likelihood that, uh, that tells you that it's gotten to the ability, has the ability to spread to the lymph nodes and could potentially be in more of the lymph nodes. If it's not in that sentinel lymph node or that first lymph node, it's incredibly unlikely to be in any of the other lymph nodes and we can avoid a larger surgery. So this is just a schematic kind of describing it has to get to this one first before getting to the rest of these. Now, initial studies uh, on the technique uh, were always followed by a complete axillary lymph node dissection. So they would inject the patient, they would get the sentinel lymph node, they would send the sentinel lymph node off, and then go in and take out the rest of the lymph nodes. And what we found was in 75 to 90 percent of the case, patients, we were able to find a lymph node that was a sentinel lymph node. Um, the negative sentinel lymph node biopsy with a positive non-sentinel lymph node was only about 1 to 2 percent. So if that first um, lymph node was negative, it was only 1% to 2% chance of any of the other lymph nodes being positive. So th this uh, validated the, the use of sentinel lymph node. 
Now, over time, we, we've seen that we do a lot of sentinel lymph nodes and we're very good at it, but still there is a recurrence rate. So about 4 to 10 percent of patients that will have a negative sentinel lymph node at some point in the future will develop an enlarged lymph node in that axilla. But that's helping 90 to 96 percent of patients to avoid a big surgery that they don't necessarily need up front. So what's the likelihood of detecting metastatic disease in a lymph node? So a rule of thumb is about 10 times the depth. So if you have a 2.5 millimeter melanoma, you have about a 25% chance of having lymph node positive disease on a sentinel lymph node. These are the averages. For less than one millimeter, it's 4%. For two to four mil I'm sorry, for one to two millimeters, it's 12%. Two to four millimeters, 28%. Greater than four millimeters, 44%. But again, it's about 10 times depth. And this is important, again, in prognosis. So if you have a negative sentinel lymph node, at five years, you have an overall disease-free survival rate of 83.2%. But if you have a positive sensitive lymph node, it goes down to 53.4%. And on the flip side, overall, so five-year mortality, so it's only about 10% for negative sensitive lymph nodes, and this is medium, all intermediate, and, and deep thickness, mel thick melanoma. So uh, this isn't all melanomas, but and it's averages. Uh, but if you have a positive sentinel lymph node, there's a 26.2% chance of mortality. So this significantly helps us give you a prognosis once we do it. Uh, the American Society of Clinical Oncology and the Society of Surgical Oncology uh, came out with overall guidelines on who should be getting sentinel lymph nodes. So now we have this new technique. It seems relatively minimally invasive. We could do small incisions so people started to do it on everybody. The problem is anything less than one millimeter in depth has such a low chance of being in the lymph node that there's no use to do the surgery. Um, it's very unlikely that it's gotten to the lymph node. So, so we've, we've agreed as societies that a 10% risk is the cutoff. Anything less than 10% risk, you don't necessarily need it. Anything greater than 10% risk, you need it. But they also included things like ulceration and mitosis. If you have higher risk or higher looking features on the tissue, then even if it's less than one millimeter, we should do the sentinel lymph node. So those are the, that's, that's when we go back to that pathology report that I showed, that's what we're looking at. Is it deep? Is it thin? Is it, does it have worrisome features? So how do you do a sentinel lymph node? So the patient comes in the day of surgery. Usually they go to nuclear medicine where radioactive material is injected within 1.5 centimeters of the primary tumor itself. And then they put you under a camera and looks for the radioactivity to, be, to spread. So this is a patient of mine from a couple of weeks ago. So he came in with a mid-chest melanoma. They injected the mid-chest melanoma, and you could see that it tracked along these lymphatics to two lymph nodes in the left armpit and one lymph node in the right armpit. So that's what I'm going after when I do my sentinel lymph node. So I take the patient to the operating room, and I use this, which is called a neoprobe or a Geiger counter, and I'm looking to find the tissue that has radioactivity in it. So I went into this gentleman, his left armpit had two radioactive lymph nodes, and right had one radioactive lymph node, and those are my sentinel lymph nodes, and I send those off to the pathologist. This gentleman's sentinel lymph nodes were negative. And that is his scar in his armpit. So a very small, relatively cosmetically pleasing. Um, not too many people are looking at armpits, but so. <laughs> so in summary, uh, just to bring it back down, if you have a worrisome lesion, please have somebody take a look at it. And if it's worrisome enough, please have somebody biopsy it. If it's a melanoma less than one millimeter, we just have to remove it with an adequate margin we don't necessarily need to look at your lymph nodes if it doesn't have any worrisome features. If it's greater than one millimeter or if it has worrisome features, then we have to do an evaluation of the lymph nodes as well. And if the sentinel lymph node is positive, then we need to go back and take out the rest of the lymph nodes to find out how many of them are positive. Thank you very much.